Hello, in this module of the NetVibes training, we'll be covering trapped topics. I'll be showing you how you can leverage NetVibes search and monitoring capabilities. I'll show you how you can use some of the inline query creation tools, as well as create uh, queries from scratch as well, and show you basically how you can make the most of these content sources that you've added to your dashboard so you can actually start to monitor what they're publishing about the topic you're interested in. So let's start by adding a track topic app. And we'll go ahead and configure it. Now there are three main configuration options for the track topic. Um, the first of all is sources, and this is where we decide which of the sources that we've added to our dashboard do we want to actually include in this track topic. So if I click um, in the input field, we can see basically three types of sources. The first one is the libraries that I've created and added to the dashboard. So these are the libraries that I created um, in the Managing Sources module of the training. If you did have any libraries that were shared with you that were owned by another dashboard or someone else, those would also be available here as well. We can also add any RSS feeds that we've added directly to feed reader apps. And then down below, the third option is industry libraries, and industry libraries are libraries that have been curated by industry specialists at Dassault System. They're available for 11 different industries, and within each industry there are industry segments that are also available, so these get pretty um, specialized. Um, as you can see here, we have the high-tech industry and then several industry segments um, available within that industry. Then for each industry, there are three options in terms of the type of content. Uh, first of all, we have corporate content, which consists of content published by the top 20 companies within that industry segment. Then we have influencers. So these are prominent people within the industry segment, perhaps company executives or journalists. And then finally, we have specialized media. So these are typically industry publications for that particular segment, or maybe the relevant section for that industry from a mainstream news publication. So for now, I will select the libraries that I created and click apply. So now we can see all of the articles or posts that have been published by all of the sources that I added to my library. In my case, because I'm, uh, I've added lots of different types of content, what I really need to do now is actually filter the content based on the topic that I'm interested in. So there are really two ways I can do this. Um, first of all, I can click on the topic and define a topic that I want to search for. So for now, I'll just keep this simple and I'll search for smart speaker. Click apply. And now we've filtered that view to just those articles that include the term smart speaker. So I think it's worth pointing out uh, at this point, what are we actually searching? So whenever we index a new article that's published by one of the content sources, we index the full article text. So when we're searching for smart speaker, that text could be in the title or it could be anywhere in the full content of the article itself. Now the topic does support standard and advanced Boolean syntax as well as some special operators that we provide as well. Um, the syntax um, is, is documented, um, so that's available uh, via the documentation that you should have access to. However, there's also the ability, if you're not so familiar with Boolean syntax, um, to hone in this query further by using some of the metrics on the right-hand side. Now, the metrics um, are basically available because when we index all of that full article text that I was referring to, we perform some semantic analysis on that unstructured text to give it some structure so you can understand the content 
and then leverage that structure to further filter the content. So we do things like um, named entity recognition, so we can pull out the names of events that are mentioned, for example, or the names of people, the names of organizations. We perform language detection, so you can segment the content based on the language that it's written in. We do sentiment analysis. We do various um, different forms of, of semantic analysis on that text, just to provide some additional value um, on top of this unstructured text. So for any of these options, you can uh, select one of the values. If you just wanted to see the content published in English, you could select English. And then if we click apply, that particular attribute has been added to our topic. We didn't need to understand the syntax or the Boolean logic behind it. It's just done it for us. So that's a nice little feature to allow you to using a visual UI, perform some or create some pretty complex queries. And then the third variable that we have is the period. So for the track topic, it's generally not really too necessary to modify this. Um, by default, it will return articles within your entire retention period, which is 90 days uh, by default usually. However, there are some options uh, to modify this, and I'll cover these in the analytics um, section, which is next. So that's really how to create a fairly simple query, but I'd like to walk through an example of the workflow that you might follow to create a kind of typical query where you're maybe looking at a particular subset of the content um, and having to actually tweak the query to make sure you're capturing as many results as are relevant, but not those that are not relevant to the actual topic that you're looking for. So let me walk through that workflow. So let's go back to the topic. And right now we have a query for smart speaker um, and then just content in English. So let me actually remove that for now. We'll go back to smart speaker. And um, what I'd like to do is find the content that's not just about smart speakers, but is all uh, also about the price of smart speakers. So I'm going to start by, by showing you how to add an additional term that I essentially want to qualify my initial uh, search query with. So I'm going to use the AND Boolean operator to, to ensure that any matches include the phrase on both the left-hand side of the operator and the right-hand side. And in addition to smart speaker, I'd also like the results to have the word pricing. So this will return results that say smart speaker and also say pricing. So if we click apply, we can see the results that come back. And we've now got um, a much smaller subset of the articles, just 68 results are coming back now. So the first thing I'd like to do to adjust my query is think about the type of language people might actually be using to refer to both smart speakers and also the subject of pricing. They're not always going to say pricing. They're not always just going to say smart speaker. So I'm going to edit this a little bit to just give you some ideas of, of how we might want to kind of expand it to make sure we're capturing all of the content. And this time, because we're looking for the different possibilities, the different options of the phrases people might use, we're going to use the OR operator so that we can capture content that um, says smart speaker but potentially says smart speaker in a different way. So for example, um, just as the example I used in the managing sources module, I'll use a smart speaker written without a space. However, people could use potentially other language. They might use the plural, so they might say smart speakers and they could also refer to smart speakers uh, as one word. And potentially we could extend this and, and uh, reference specific smart speaker brands and models um, as well, but I'll just leave it at that for now. And then same for 
pricing, people might not necessarily say pricing. They might say uh, price. They might say prices. They might say uh, discounts or cost or costs. So let's leave the query there for now and see what that's done to our results. So you can see just by adding a few additional terms, we've um, in increased the results uh, by about 15-fold. Uh, um, so many more results now. Um, so we know we're capturing a lot more content. So like you really, when you're building out a query in a production environment, you really could spend some time um, really thinking about what type of language people might use, I really recommend reviewing the articles, reading some of the text, um, looking at the other language people have used in the text and adding those words and phrases back into your topic. So we're getting some good results now. What I might find is perhaps we actually want to increase the relevancy. So now we've, we've initially expanded our results, but maybe we actually think, well, Let's make sure that pricing is really one of the key topics of the article. So we could do that by ensuring that the pricing term doesn't just occur within the article, but it actually occurs in the title itself. So we could do that by using the title operator. So that's title and then a colon. And we could use that with one word, but since we already have parentheses around our uh, list of different terms. I can just put that right before our opening parentheses and click apply and see how that's affected the results. So now we have somewhat fewer results, but we know that all of these results are actually mentioning pricing in the title. So we have uh, some higher relevancy. Another method that we could also achieve relevancy in a slightly different way, um, because although that's good, we know that the article is really talking about pricing prominently. An alternative could be better, could be worse. It's one of those things where it's you know worth trying things out and then just reviewing the results to see uh, the effect that the changes had. Another thing we could do is make sure that the term for smart speaker appears in the article in close proximity to the term for pricing. And we could do that by replacing our and and title operators with the word near. Using that word near means that the phrases on each side of our operator don't just have to appear anywhere in the article text, but they actually have to appear within 15 words of each other. So generally, if we use a near operator like this, those two phrases will have to be roughly in the same paragraph or maybe even in the same sentence. So we know that the article isn't gonna be talking about smart speakers at the beginning and then pricing of a completely different product at the end. It's very likely that it's going to be talking about pricing of the smart speaker. We can go a little bit further and if we add a forward slash at the end of near, we can actually specify the number of words, the maximum number of words that could appear between the two terms. So in this case, you could only have five words in between the term for pricing and the term for smart speaker. So if we go back to our results, See, we actually have a few more articles this way, and we do know that they're all talking about um, the price of smart speakers. Um, so this could potentially be a better option. So that highlights some of the more common or more commonly used uh, Boolean operators. However, there are a lot more at your disposal. Um, so I definitely recommend checking out the Boolean syntax document that is available in our documentation. So having built our query, let's have a look at how we can actually monitor the results as they come in. So here is our track topic. We can see all of our results in reverse chronological order. First of all, I'll make that a little bit bigger just so we can see what's going on. Uh, we can quickly give that a title in the uh, references menu. 
we can call that smart speaker articles. Click save. So we can browse through these articles that are displayed in reverse chronological order so we can always see the most recent ones um, at the top. We can also click on those to see each particular article and the text that it contains. Um, generally, I like to use the track topic in maximize mode when I'm actually browsing the article so I can see the full article in the right hand pane and then you can still browse through all of the results on the left. For Twitter, um, this view is quite good just because it shows you that headline text which is really kind of the most important on Twitter. Um, however, we do have some options in terms of the view. Um, so back in that preferences menu, we can switch from condensed, which is uh, obviously the most condensed and compact view where you're just looking at the headline um, through normal, which allows you to see some of the article text as well as any thumbnail images on the left. So this doesn't allow you to see as many articles, but you can get a bit more of a feel for what uh, the article is about. Um, and then there's also a mosaic view, which is particularly good if you have very image focused content, because it really puts that um, thumbnail front and center. If you do find an article that is of interest, NetVibes integrates with 3D Swim, so that article doesn't have to just stay in this track topic. Perhaps this is a sign that we should be targeting a specific price uh, for our new smart speaker based on market research. We can share this article to 3D Swim, select the relevant community that we want to share it to, and then have that discussion in 3D Swim. So we could give it the title that we want. Let's get rid of some of those URLs. And then we can comment um, and give our opinion about that. Now that we've found this insight, we can have the relevant conversation with our colleagues in the relevant environment, in this case, 3D Swim. That concludes the track topic module. Um, so next up will be analytics.